A croque monsieur is a traditional Parisian sandwich that became popular in the early 20th century. Now, if you translate the word croque monsieur, croque means crunch, monsieur means mister. So it winds up being Mr. Crunchy. So Brian's here to show us how to make it. Also known as Mr. Crunchy in my day. <laughs> you know why the sandwich is still popular? It's because it's completely over the top. Mm -hmm. You have salty, sweet, smoky ham in the middle, Gruyere cheese, Parmesan, and a cheese-injected white sauce that drenches the whole thing. I mean, what's not to love? I'm in. We're gonna begin by toasting all of our bread ahead of time. So we're gonna do that in the oven, and I have eight slices of hearty white sandwich bread that I'm going to lay onto the sheet pan that I've lined with aluminum foil and gone ahead and sprayed with nonstick cooking spray mm -hmm. because we're gonna melt the cheese over these sandwiches and we don't want the sandwiches to stick to the tray later. Easy cleanup. Exactly. So we're gonna brush this bread with four tablespoons of melted butter. Now, I know what you're thinking, that's a lot of butter. I was just thinking, <laughs> that's half a stick. <laughs> you know, this is not a recipe to pull punches on. We're all in with this recipe. We tested a lot of different types of bread, and in the end, we really like the subtle sweetness of this hearty white sandwich bread. It goes really well with the salty ham. So we'll brush the second side here with melted butter. Okay, we're gonna toast this in the oven, as I mentioned. And we have the oven rack set six inches from the broiler element because at the end, we're gonna broil the sandwich. The oven is preheated to 375 degrees. We're gonna toast this bread for a total of 13 minutes. We're gonna flip it over after the first 10. All right. Okay, so now we can turn our attention to our white sauce. We're gonna make what's called a Mornay. And the basis for that is a bechamel. It's basically a thickened milk sauce. Okay, so we have two tablespoons of butter that we melted here over medium heat. And to that, we're going to add two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. What we're making here is called a roux. And <laughs> this is the way we're gonna thicken our sauce. So the butter's melted. We're gonna whisk in the flour until it's fully incorporated and there's no lumps remaining. We wanna cook this mixture for about one minute just to cook off the raw taste of the flour. Mm -hmm. So a roux is part flour, part fat, usually 50-50 in terms of volume, and it is a thickening agent used for sauces. Now, the more you cook a roux, the less thickening power it has. If you think about a gumbo, you cook that roux for a long time until it gets nice and brown and the flour toasts, but it doesn't thicken as well as a white roux, which is only cooked for about a minute. So you can smell that the roux begins to get a little bit nutty, and that's perfect. It's been cooking for about a minute. Now we're gonna whisk in one cup of whole milk. I like to go a little bit slow with it and just keep on whisking as I'm adding it so I don't get any mm. lumps. Now, you'll notice I'm using this flat whisk. I know. This thing is great, especially when you're working with a small saucepan because it really lets you get into the corner so you don't get those pockets of uncooked roux. So bechamels have a tendency to scorch on the bottom, so you don't want to walk away. You want to keep whisking every so often. Now, we're going to bring this to a boil. You can see this starting to boil, and we can just shut this off. Now that it's reached a boil, that's as thick as it's gonna get. It's reached its full thickening potential there. So while the sauce is still hot, we're gonna incorporate one cup of shredded Gruyere cheese. Ooh. Yeah, don't be shy with the cheese in this <laughs> one. A quarter cup of grated Parmesan cheese, half a teaspoon of table salt, a quarter teaspoon of pepper, and nutmeg is a traditional addition to these white sauces in France, so a pinch of nutmeg. And we're just going to whisk this all together. We wanted a thick Mornay because we're gonna apply this to the bread and we want it to stick on the bread rather than run right off of it. Okay, so that's nice and smooth. We can set this aside for a few moments. We'll go back and check on our bread and when the bread's all toasted, we're ready to assemble our sandwich. All right. Our toast is beautifully light golden brown. So now we're ready to assemble our sandwiches. So we're gonna remove four slices of this toast to a plate, and we're gonna begin assembling the sandwiches on our prepared sheet pan. Begin by adding one tablespoon of our Mornay to each piece of bread. <laughs> that Mornay actually almost looks like mayonnaise. It yeah. is so thick. It thickens up pretty nicely. Now you can work with this when it's fully chilled. I like it when it's just still a little bit warm because it spreads nice and easily. But, but I see what you mean, it's nice and thick so it'll stick to the bread. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're gonna spread the Mornay evenly over each piece of bread. It does spread very much like mayonnaise. <laughs> the best cheesy mayonnaise you've ever had in your life. So now we're gonna layer on about three ounces of ham per sandwich. And I like to use the old deli commercial in a folding <laughs> technique to get some nice height and texture in the sandwich. This is 12 ounces altogether of black forest ham. 
The kind of black forest ham you find at the deli here in America is very different than the traditional black forest ham you'd find in Germany. The deli ham is brined quickly, it's cooked, then flavored with a bunch of sweet things on the outside to make a glaze. Whereas in Germany, it is a strictly regulated product. In Germany, the hams are smoked for three months, flavored with a variety of unique things, including juniper berries, and then sometimes dipped in cow's blood to give that iconic dark coating. And the texture of a traditional German ham is also quite different. It is almost more like prosciutto and it's sliced very thin. We've got our ham layered onto the bread now and so we're going to apply Mornay to the top portion of the sandwich. So each piece of toast now gets two tablespoons of Mornay. All right now that each piece is coated we're mm -hmm. going to invert those Mornay side down on top of the ham. So another two tablespoons of Mornay over top of each sandwich. You're giving that tablespoon a workout. No. I'm going to spread this on top of the bread. And as we're spreading this, you want to make sure that we get all the way to the edge. Because underneath the broiler, these edges are the first part of the sandwich that's going to start to char and burn a little bit. It's not a make or break thing, but... It's a Mornay insulation? <laughs> yes. <laughs> in some countries, they insulate their whole house in Mornay. <laughs> that country is France. <laughs> okay, and now on top, we're going to add a quarter cup of grated Parmesan cheese. Goodness. <laughs> this is taking ham and cheese to a whole new level. And then on top of that, just a slight one cup of <laughs> shredded Gruyere cheese. <laughs> just a slight one cup. <laughs> we'll just divide this cheese evenly among the sandwiches. All right. Brian, that looks like something else. <laughs> oh, it is. It is. <laughs> so now we're going to bake the sandwich still at 375 degrees on that upper middle rack of the oven, about six inches from the broiler element. We're going to bake it for five minutes to get the sandwich hot throughout, and then we're going to switch it to broil and nicely brown that cheese on top. Julia, let's take a look at our sandwiches. Now you can see that that cheese is nicely melted. The Mornay is beginning to flow from the sides. It means <laughs> it's getting nice and hot on the inside there. So we're going to put these back in. We're going to switch the oven to broil, and we're going to let these go until they're nice and spotty brown on top, somewhere in the neighborhood of five minutes. But you want to stay close to the oven so you can keep an eye on these, because they'll burn in no time at all. Julia, these sandwiches look amazing. <laughs> you know they're ready when they're bubbling on top and spotty brown around the edges. Mm. <laughs> Crispy and bubbly. That's a sandwich. You see why it was important to push that Mornay all the way to the edge. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You know, if you were to put a fried egg on this croque monsieur, it would change to a croque madame. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> there are actually lots of variations on this sandwich. There's a croque provençal that has a sliced tomato. There's croque bolognese, which you ladle bolognese sauce in there. And there's more with potatoes, blue cheese, the list goes on. So as much as I want to dig into this right now, that looks pretty hot. Let's let it cool for a few minutes and come back and dig in. All right, Julia, are you ready to dig in? Oh, am I? Oh. Goodness. I recommend that you eat it with a knife and fork. <laughs> this is not a pick up and eat with your hands kind of sandwich. All right. I'm going right for the corner. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. This is one of my all time favorite sandwiches. Mm. Oftentimes when I eat a croque monsieur, the bread is really soggy. It soaked up too much of that wet Mornay, so it's just not very good. But here, the toast still has some texture. Right, and that's one of the main reasons why we toasted the bread in the beginning, because we didn't want to eat a soggy sandwich. I mean, who does, right? Not you, Mr. Crunchy. <laughs> I got a name to live up to. <laughs> oh, this is good. You can taste the Gruyere, you can taste a little bit of the parm, and that pinch of nutmeg mm -hmm. really tastes great with the ham. Brian. This is amazing. Thank you. You're very welcome. It's Mr. Crunchy, by the way. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Mr. Crunchy. <laughs> if you want to make this iconic Parisian sandwich, brush white bread with melted butter and toast it in the oven. Make a thick Mornay sauce, then assemble the sandwiches and top with sauce and extra cheese. Bake the sandwiches for five minutes, then finish under the broiler to brown the top. From Cook's Country, a killer recipe for croque monsieur. You can get this recipe and all the recipes from this season, along with tastings, testings, and select episodes at our website, cookscountry.com slash TV. So if you put an egg on it, it's a croque madame. That's a Mrs. Crunchy. Right, and I bet you they're happily married. <laughs> the whole Crunchy family. <laughs>
Thanks for watching Cook's Country from America's Test Kitchen. So what'd you think? Leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make or just say hi. Now you can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. Alligator. <laughs>